Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I wanted to get back to you on some new Beauty Pie makeup that I've been trying. I need to make sure you understand that I have a real strong love affair with Beauty Pie. <laughs> I feel like, and that's mainly for their skincare. Their skincare and their body products really have won me over. I am starting to notice that my skincare shelf is starting to fill up with more and more and more and more Beauty Pie. And I feel like when they get a product right, they hit it out of the park. Um, I haven't had 100% success with all of their makeup, but honestly, I'm pretty surprised. So let's get into it. I picked this up. This is their Everyday Great Skin Concealer. I did not expect to like this because I had previously tried another Beauty Pie concealer, which was an epic fail for me. I was like, no. Nope. And, and it could be the way that I like to wear makeup. I don't always wear a primer. And I feel like that other product would have been better with a mattifying primer, with a pore filling primer. But sometimes I just don't have time for that. And this works today. This is the only base product I'm wearing today other than their, um, their under eye corrector. This is their super luminous under eye genius. I have that kind of like in the dark spots. And then I have this in various places around my face. I am not wearing a such a foundation, a very light layer of a beauty pie powder, but this, okay. So the one thing that's interesting is that I struggle to get it out. And sometimes when I pull it out, because it is such a tight fit, I do have like a little blob of makeup go flying. So I'm trying to be careful how I get it out. That's okay, whatever. I've had other products that do that. It's not my favorite, but it's not a deal breaker for me. I feel like the size of the doe foot is actually really nice. I kind of like a smaller doe foot because I feel like some of those larger ones, those more shape tape sized ones that are like massive, I get product in places I don't want. I feel like I can get a much more pinpointed um, application with this. This is, by the way, is the shade 50 Super Light. There is a shade 25, but this is the second to lightest shade. When I was counting the other day, there are 14 of these, 14 shades. I feel like it's not the most and it's not the worst, but I wouldn't mind a few more shades to make sure everybody can find what they're looking for. I do feel like their fair shades are fair enough and they tend to be more neutral and not pink or really warm. Now that may not be what you're looking for, but I can only tell you based on the two concealers that I've tried from them, I feel like they do go fair enough for me and I usually wear the lightest or the second to lightest shade in every foundation and concealer with rare exception. So I like that when I blend it in, I can't really tell where it is. So it's lightweight. I feel like this formulation is halfway between a radiant concealer and shape tape. It's not quite the shape tape creamy because I feel like you lose a little bit of coverage and it blends away super easily. But shape tape on my 47 year old under eyes is like a sin. I have committed a sin and now they are all showing. <laughs> So I like that this gives me coverage, but it's never heavy. And it's a little radiant without being too glowy because sometimes if products are too glowy, they just instantly sink into my crinkles. This kind of stays where I put it. I actually really like the way it looks under here. I have it in the corners of my nose. I have a little bit on my chin hiding post acne inflammation spots. Um, I have a little dot of it here, not a ton, because you can still see it pretty good. but. I really kind of just carefully went over spots on my face and just quickly blended it in. It blends in super easy with the beauty sponge. I also like using kind of like a small, dense, but synthetic brush like this to kind of get things where I want. But those are my preferred methods of blending this product. I also really like it just with my finger. Like, I can't really tell where it is. It doesn't look heavy. It doesn't feel heavy. It looks skin-like. Some concealers really sit on the skin. This one's really pretty. I've been reaching for this, especially on work days when I put my makeup on at seven, I leave by 7.40 and I don't get home until 5.30 and I don't really have a chance to touch up my face. I need something that's gonna last all day. This has been doing it. And it doesn't make me look dry under the eyes because some concealers look good in the beginning and then they just start to get drier throughout the day. This is beautiful. 
Another product that I picked up that I knew I was gonna love, it was just a matter did I get the right shade, is this. I already have one of their Super Cheap Cream Blushes. This one is in a new shade called Sexy Berry. You can see I've really been in here. It's what I'm wearing on my lips. It's what I have on my cheeks mixed in with their liquid luminizer. But this is just beautiful. It is a little bit thicker. Um, it looks kind of intimidating here, but when you start to blend it out, it blends super easily. I use it with my fingers, I use it with a sponge, I use it with a synthetic brush. One of my favorites is using the Beauty Pie like foundation brush. <laughs> uh, this is their Sleemless Foundation Buffing Brush. I actually just dip this in here and super easy to do. Love that. But this is one of those products that I have a previous shade of. I have the deepest shade called French Raspberry, which is beautiful and more plummy. And this has more of a red, almost a bricky undertone to it. And it works really well as a lip product. It doesn't dry my lips out. Um, it fades evenly all over. And I know it's not meant to be lips because it's like super cheek, <laughs> but I like it both places. I really, really do. And if I'm going for a more monochromatic look, um, I've had good success with this on the lips. I haven't had success with this on the eyes. It's not made for the eyes, but I did once try and put like a light wash for a monochromatic look and it creased because it's a cream product, but this shade is beautiful. I like the way that it looks. There have been days that I'm not wearing a ton of makeup and I have a little bit of concealer on, I put something in my brows and I reach for something like this. And you can see how it has a little bit of like luminosity to it. I, I wouldn't say that it's got like a shine or a highlight to it. It just looks very skin-like. And I like that look on my lips where they're not completely matte and flat and where I have color here, but it's not like really glowy. It just looks natural. This is really beautiful. I find that it lasts all day on me on the cheeks. And of course, cause it's not meant really to be a lip product. I do have to reapply, but it's kind of easy to do and it's, really, really gorgeous. I love that I have two of these. I would definitely be willing to pick up a third. So today I have this mixed with this as a glowy cheek. That's where my glow is coming from. This is their Triple Beauty Luminizing Wand. This is very much a, I feel like it's trying to be a straight up dupe of the Charlotte Tilbury, what is it? The Beauty Light Wand. Because look, we look the same. We have little squeezy tubes. So the one from Beauty Pie has the same problem with the one from Charlotte does. They get gross on the inside. Okay, I'm gonna put the Charlotte one away. Let's talk about this. I think this is a beautiful formula. I like the way that you're able to squeeze, like you can turn this here, you can squeeze product up through the cushion, you can close it, and then you can apply it this way. The problem that I have with this and why this product doesn't work for me is just tone. It's too deep. So. If you look at it this way, you can really see how much darker it is than my skin tone. I need something that is a little bit lighter. The one from Charlotte is right here, and you can see how it's very close to my skin tone, and this is not. So when it hits the light, I mean, look how shiny and gorgeous that is, but when it doesn't hit the light, I have like a little tan bar right here on my cheekbone, or if I take it up and over the top of the arch of my brow or on the bridge of my nose, and the light isn't always hitting me just right for it to be, you know, blinding like this. Sometimes you see this. So I have taken to mixing it with a cream product, sometimes the one from Beauty Pie, sometimes one from another brand, and using it as a creamy, glowy blush. Now, is this gonna work for most skin tones? Probably, probably is, and it's really beautiful. I feel like it blends easily. I feel like it wears beautifully. I feel like everything about the formulation is nice. I don't like this packaging, but then again, I never liked this one. I don't like the fact that when I put things back, inevitably there's product like all over the cushion, and then it gets all over the inside of the cap, and then the cap gets it all over this portion here. So it, it is kind of a mess. And it really does annoy and bother me, but the product is beautiful. I would prefer, oh, even something like this, where you have it in a tube still, and you have it on a doe foot. I think that would be better myself, but 
I think they're trying to make sure that it's very clear this is meant to be a more affordable version of this. I prefer the Charlotte Tilbury just because she has multiple shades of this highlight. Now, if Beauty Pie were to come out with two more shades, like keep this one, one lighter and one darker, ah, that'd be it. And I would never feel like I need to buy another one from Charlotte because these are what, 30 bucks? This is what, under 12? This is a beautiful product. It just doesn't work for me just because the tone is wrong. I picked this up. This is their Archology Eyebrow Sculpting Gel. I have the shade Cool, oh no, Perfect Brown. This is just your traditional tinted brow gel with fibers. I feel like it does a really good job of bulking up my brows. I feel like it does a good job of depositing fibers to look like I have more hair than I actually have. And I feel like the shade Perfect Brown is actually a really good match. Um, what's interesting is that I've watched a couple of other YouTubers who mentioned they use this, and I know somebody who is blonde uses the shade Perfect Brown. I know somebody who is um, a little bit more warm with their brunette hair wears the shade Perfect Brown. I feel like this could be like their universal taupe shade, although I think they do have a taupe shade. Um, but I'm surprised at how many people who I've seen review this talk about using the same shade I'm using, and I feel like this works really well for me. Here's what I like about it. First of all, the size of the brush. The one thing I do notice is that I do get product that gets caught between the wand and the base of the brush, like there's a little groove right here. So I just take the time to, you know, like wipe off that excess. Otherwise, because the last half of my brows from the arch to the tail is really sparse. And if I'm back combing and putting product in there and I have extra product around the base, I usually end up getting it where I don't want it. So I always back comb my brows and that not only places product on the back side of the hairs, but it also is extra places for those fibers to adhere. And then I go through and I brush everything up and kind of settle and place things where I want. I feel like this is a really great product. I always like to look at price per ounce. And what's interesting is you're getting a tenth of an ounce of 0.1 ounces in this. If you're looking at some of the higher end brands, I used to love the one from Charlotte Tilbury, the Legendary Brows. There you're getting 0 0.04. You're getting less than half of what you get in here, and that is $25. So let me just tell you that this is great. I wish, the only way this could be more perfect for me is if the brush was not this shape, but the brush was the skinny, teeny tiny shape that I get from the M1. I prefer this type of brush over this one. This one really reminds me of the one from Benefit. Um, but you know what? It does a great job. I like the fibers in here. It's way less expensive. It does a good job. It has a good hold. If you're making a Beauty Pie order and you want an easy one product for your brows, you might actually really enjoy this. I picked up one of their gel liners. This is their Ultra Color Pro gel liner. I have the shade Molten Bronze. I am wearing this today. This is such, let me see if I can get a bigger swatch for you, a pretty eyeliner. It glides on super easily, but I like the metallic shade that it has. It gives a little bit of visual interest. This is one of those that I sharpen every single time I use. I line my lash line with it, and then I kind of shove it in between my lashes because I feel like there are some gaps in there. And if I have any of that, you know, fair skin just kind of showing through, no amount of mascara is really gonna hide that. So I kind of shove this in there, and then I kind of really run it along the base of the lashes like right here without getting it all the way in my waterline. I really love the way that this looks, especially with this kind of not a really deep dark brown. It's kind of more of a metallic-y cool brown. I really like this. I feel like it wears really well. I don't have any problems with it wiping off. I don't have any product that, you know, collects in the corners, inner or outer corners, and then I'm, you know, crying little sad panda or raccoon tears. That happens with other products sometimes. This really lasts well. It doesn't smudge. It doesn't go anywhere. I'm thinking about other formulas that I like. I really like the one from Pat McGrath. I feel like this one lasts really, really well. And you can see this is um, a very different shade. This one, by the way, is the shade Black Coffee. So this is definitely lighter in tone. I also really love the one from Persona. This is probably my favorite brown liner. And I feel like this one's just a little bit creamier than this and it doesn't move anywhere. 
If you're making a beauty pie order and you're looking for a good gel pencil, this one actually is beautiful and you're not paying the same price as you were, like the 20 plus dollars for the one from Pat is it 18 or 20 dollars. This one I think is like 16 dollars. It's still really good. This one is going to cost you 12 dollars or less depending on the color that you're getting but it lasts really, really, really well. And I like having kind of like this metallic-y bronze shade here. It really makes like some looks a little bit more interesting. The last thing that I picked up in my recent Beauty Pie order is this. This is one of the deluxe eyeshadow quads from makeup artist James Malloy. So he collabed with Beauty Pie and this is where I tell you, I feel like Beauty Pie a lot of times is kind of coming for Charlotte Tilbury. I feel like Charlotte Tilbury has been the brand that a lot of people think about when they're thinking about dupes at Beauty Pie because, let me just pull one of these out. Packaging wise, they're the same size. They open up the same. Pan size is a little different, but if you're looking, this is the one from Charlotte. This is the one from Beauty Pie. The pans are a little bit wider in the Beauty Pie one, but do you see, like if we were to turn this upside down, you know, the metallic gold rim around the edge, the fact that this one says Charlotte, this one says Beauty Pie, they're so similar. They're so similar. I'm gonna put Charlotte away again. I think it's really funny. It really feels like they're trying hard to dupe Charlotte Tilbury. Now, I have two of those quads and I have one of her larger holiday eyeshadows. The one thing that I like about Charlotte's formula is that it actually doesn't age my more textured eyelids. As a 47 year old, I definitely am worried about things that are gonna sit on my eyelid and are going to kind of make it look more lumpy, more wrinkled, more crinkled than it already is. And these have a beautiful finish on the eye. The metallic shades are absolutely beautiful, but when you blend them out, they don't really call extra attention to the eyelid. I love this kind of warm bronzy chocolate shade here. And um, the gold shade, it shows up very gold on my eye, but when I'm wearing it by itself, it tends to be a little bit more sheer. The one thing this doesn't have is it doesn't have like an eyeshadow topper. I, maybe I suppose the gold could be used that way, but I feel like every single one of Charlotte's palettes has a formula that's in there that's supposed to be just like a sheer kind of glittery topper. I don't really find that in here. I do really like the mattes. I feel like the mattes in here are super soft and buttery, but I feel like these two shades are kind of close. Um, sometimes when I have them blended out, I can't tell the lighter from the darker. So I get a real specific eye look when I wear this eyeshadow palette. I get something very similar to this. I have the darkest brown in the crease. I have this on the outer corner, and then I have the gold on the inner kind of half of my lid, and I have the lightest brown underneath the lower lash line. I feel like I'm getting a similar look. There are days that I wear just these two, and there are days that I wear just these two. There are days that all I wear is this shade right here, and then there are days that all I do is I wear just this kind of matte lighter brown. If I want a slightly sculpted, gotta go, don't have time for a lot, but I want a little definition in the eye. I have been reaching for this a ton because I started working um, in March, and this is a super easy eyeshadow palette. I don't wear this much eyeshadow to work. It's usually a little bit lighter and I kind of skip the gold, but this has become like a regular staple that I reach for. I feel like the formula is great. It's just over $18, it's $18 and change. Oh my goodness, for the quality that you're getting, it's absolutely beautiful. If you're curious, there's 1.6 grams in the one from Beauty Pie and there are 1.8 grams in the one from Charlotte Tilbury. You're getting just a hair more in this, but it's it's hardly worth the, what is it, $53 <laughs> for this when you can get this for less than half the price. I feel like, you know, you're getting a similar formula, you're getting a similar packaging, and I feel like the colors on the eyes wear really well. I don't wear a primer I feel like it lasts all day, but I don't have oily eyelids. I feel like this is a beautiful formula. And if you like one of the three shades that they have from Beauty Pie, they have this one, they have a rose gold, and they have a silver. I'm kind of curious about the rose gold. I don't really need any more eyeshadow, but I'm surprised how much I've been using this. I was sure when I saw it, I was like, oh, I got the boring Betty one. Actually, Betty's doing pretty good. She's getting pulled on regularly for work and she is like staying all day. So I'm kind of curious to try another one of the ones 
from this James Malloy collab. Before I go, let me just quickly run through some of my all-time favorites from Beauty Pie in the makeup department. One, I mentioned earlier, this is the Super Luminous Under Eye Genius. I've hit pan, I will need another eventually. This has made all the difference in concealing my under eye circles without getting too heavy or cakey. I really love this. Another product that I love that I use regularly is their One Powder Wonder. This is the one in Uberlescent Universal. It looks frighteningly white in the palette, but it is really lightweight. I mean, did you see that? Like hardly anything. And when you take the time to blend it in, you really can't see it. But there is a soft luminosity to this. It takes down the shine without making you completely matte. It's perfect for the under eye because you can hardly see it. It sets whatever you have and I don't have product like sliding around under the eyes and kind of settling into my creases and crinkles. This is a lifesaver for me. I can be very heavy handed with this and not have any of it show. It's beautiful. Another product I have really started to enjoy is their mascara, their Uber Volume Boost Velvet Mascara. It's what I'm wearing today. Here's where I tell you I have the wimpiest, <laughs> kind of most disappointing eyelashes in all of creation. Um, they're short, they point downwards, they hardly hold a curl. And um, yeah, they're just kind of like, what? So I want something that's dramatic. And for me, I'm looking for the sort of drama where there's both length and there's volume without getting too clumpy. When things get too clumpy, then I just look a little scary. And I like this. I have two coats of it on, on the upper and the bottom. And I think this is beautiful. I also like the fact that it has kind of like one of those fluffy kind of, I wouldn't say it's a natural bristle because it's not natural, but it's not one of those spiky silicone-y wands. I have a real hard time with those. I prefer a wand like this. The formula is beautiful. I can put it on the bottom. I don't get any flaking. I don't get any smudging. It stays all day and it's not like crazy difficult to get off. Love this. And I like that it starts out a little drier when you pull it out of the tube for the first time and then it continues to layer. You have to use a little bit more effort to get it to build, but that's because it's a little bit drier than a lot of other formulas, but I don't end up with mascara everywhere. So I really love this. My favorite, oh, I've got a couple of them. I love this. This is their uh, Wonder Gloss Collagen Lip Oil. I've got several shades of it. Where's my other one? There's another one over here somewhere. I think she's living in my purse. This is my favorite gloss of all time. I love it more than any other formula. This one here is a limited edition shade. This one is called Sun Haze, but they do these nude shades so well. I feel like Charlotte Tilbury is known for doing beautiful nudes for everybody, and I feel like um, Beauty Pie is like, great, we'll do just the same thing. And they have a wide variety of easy to wear beautiful shades and their nudes are particularly beautiful. This one here is called Spicy Pink and it feels more like a peach shade, but it's so pretty on the lips. Um, the one that I have in my purse is called Jammy and it's kind of like a plummy shade, but they're glossy, they're comfortable. They don't feather out of my lips. They, they just feel amazing. And these are the only lip glosses that I've been able to go through and finish. I think I finished three tubes of this since I bought them for the first time a year and a half ago. And I've actually finished them. A lot of times I'll get part way through. A lot of times, you know, this one I got like maybe a quarter of the way through and then it went bad. Ugh, I hate that. These are the only ones I really like habitually repurchase. And it's rare for me to repurchase a gloss, but this formula is amazing. The one thing I will tell you is I feel like their makeup aesthetic is very much natural, pretty. You're not gonna get a ton of bright pops of color. You're not going to get a ton of experimental stuff. They're gonna do a lot of the basics that you see other places. They're just not gonna charge you an arm and a leg for them. I feel like if you like easy, um, almost effortless looking makeup, you'd probably like a lot of what Beauty Pie has to offer. And from what I've tried, I can see why so many people really like it. I would say that if you tend to be more adventuresome in makeup, you'll, you wanna try new finishes, new colors, new technologies. Beauty Pie is not the first place to go for that. You're gonna find more exciting stuff in other brands. But if you don't wanna hassle, you wanna get one thing, fall in love with it, and be able to keep repurchasing it, Beauty Pie is great for that.
Thank you so much for watching today. I would love to know, do you buy from Beauty Pie? Do you have a favorite product? It doesn't have to be a makeup product. Let me know what it is in the comment down below. Or if there's a reason why you haven't been using Beauty Pie, what is it? If you have any questions, please let me know. And thank you again for watching today. Have a great day and I'll see you again soon.